Now, let us try to some understand some daily life phenomena. We are riding a bicycle. Okay, we are riding a bicycle. Just wait. We are riding a bicycle. Okay. So, so there's a pedal somewhere here, and maybe one of your feet is there, and and the fellow is sitting like this, and from here there is a handle that you are holding. Okay. Fine. Now what happens when we when we are pedaling a bicycle we find that if we stop pedaling the bicycle starts tends to stop okay if we stop pedaling then it tends to stop now this is what prompted the people earlier to say that stop is the natural state of motion that's why it is trying to stop and we just cannot do anything about it but if you if you just understand if there is a lot of grass on the field and you are moving with the cycle you'll see it tends to stop faster when compared to a field where there is the, the, there is a shorter grass when compared to maybe the floor absolutely absolutely smooth floor of your maybe portico right so it tells me that again there is something that is between the surface and my bicycle that changes when the nature of the surface changes and again we come to the same conclusion that it was the friction so 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 what happens when i when i stop pedaling and the bike tends to stop it means it was when you stop pedaling you are not applying any force here the friction keeps on acting like this and you tend to stop this is your friction or we have seen that to move in a, at a certain velocity to move at a constant velocity to move in a uniform motion constant velocity is nothing but uniform motion straight line same velocity is uniform motion so what happens so so this case no pedaling no pedaling okay so your force is zero okay no for that means applied forces applied force is zero friction is there so what happens the bicycle the bicycle stops the bicycle stops okay the bicycle stops now what happens if there is a constant applied force we we know by our experience we know by our experience so so the next case so the next case i draw on the same i am applying a force the black one the friction is again the same i see if there is a constant force if there is a constant applied force so as to just balance the frictional force frictional force what happens the frictional force the bicycle moves with a constant velocity now what happens in this case there is no net force that is being applied in this case no net force 
is applied right no net force gets applied that means the forces are balanced forces thus thus we see that in presence of a balanced force a balanced force the bicycle the bicycle moves with a uniform motion with a uniform motion correct now what happens we apply a bigger force so we pedal more these are three cases fine here i was not pedaling the the cycle was in motion okay it was already moving so it so it tended to stop okay the bicycle stops this is the this is the first case no pedaling this is the first case this is the second case now i'm discussing the third case the third case is the applied my applied force is more than the frictional force i start gaining speed my speed starts moving up right so so if there is a there is a force that that is more than the frictional force the bicycle tends to the bicycle tends to accelerate accelerate that means this is a see the friction still remains the same that is this is an unbalanced force right thus in the presence of in the presence of unbalanced forces the objects tend to here also there is an unbalanced force do you understand that we are not applying any force so in case 1 the objects tend to decelerate as in case 1 or accelerate as in this case correct it's quite obvious right now same with the ball what if there is a ball here okay now what happens the same thing happens if i do not apply any force and it is stationary it simply does not move okay so what happens in absence of any force the ball the ball doesn't move the ball doesn't move right
now again the same thing if i if i kick it then it starts moving if if i if i apply just a very small force on it just so small a force that it is balanced by just so small a force that this is balanced by the frictional force it will still not move right it will not move though it is a very very small frictional force still it will not move okay if i if i kick it then after some time it rolls to a stop the same thing the force is absent the frictional force is present it tends to stop if it's a smoother surface on which i hit it it it, it travels a longer distance if it is smoother still maybe on a floor on a very well polished wooden floor with no with no no faults and flaws in between a very smooth floor it keeps on rolling if you maybe smoothen the ball as well as they do in the bowling alleys right what happens it it keeps on moving moving and moving for a long long distance before it it, it can come to a stop so again the same kind of thing is happening the ball does not stop or starts moving on its own it does not start moving on its own and also it is it does not stop on its own it is absolutely neutral in that respect so what happens what happens is uh, until and unless there is an unbalanced force which may be visible to you or not visible to you your pedaling is visible the presence of the frictional force is not even vis visible right it's not even visible and that is what misled the scientists of the early years okay and it was this insight that made galileo and newton successful in formulating the laws of motion they were able to understand that the object itself is absolutely neutral it is not a lazy object it, it does not want to be at rest it will actually be at rest if you don't apply an unbalanced force it will keep on moving if you do not apply an unbalanced force okay so ultimately it all boiled down to this if we understand this then we'll discuss one of the galileo's experiments and then we'll formulate the first law of motion right